This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and in this video we're going to look at some fixes we can make to make our better jumping script work a little bit better with Unity's physics system. Um, in an effort to keep the previous video as short as possible, at 12 minutes, um, I did do some hacks that were a little bit quick, and I should uh, clarify those so that, like I say, this script um, works and plays a little bit better with the physics system that Unity has built into it. So the first thing, and a number of you have pointed out, is that we really shouldn't be changing physics things with the rigid body in the update function. And so we're going to fix that by using what is called the fixed update function, which is where Unity handles all of its physics calculations. First one we want to do that in is our jump script, which is really handling kind of the input of getting the jump and then causing the player to jump. However, we run into a little bit of an issue here because if we just take this and make this fixed update, now we're getting our input in the fixed update as well, and that can cause some weirdness. I'm actually going to revert this back to just update and show you here. I've created a separate player, which has a altered jump script here. And this, the only difference of this jump script is just what I told you. I changed this now to fixed update in here. So now we're getting our input in there. And you'll see here, you should see what happens if I hit play and I start hitting, hitting the jump button every so often, that green character that isn't that's using the fixed update isn't responding. It's not all that often, but it does happen. And when it happens, um, that could be the difference of a player making a jump or not making a jump. So we can't do that. We have to break this out into two separate things now. I'm going to get rid of this fixed jump, and I'm actually going to delete that fixed player because we're not going to use him any further. So in order to do this, what we need to do here is instead of just causing this physics change to happen, we need to call this in the fixed update. So we're going to say void fixed update and we can move this down into here. However, the problem is this right now is going to happen every single frame which is going to send our player rocketing into the sky. And so what we need is some way for this method up here to communicate with this method down here. And we're going to do that simply by passing a variable or just kind of storing the information in the variable. I'm going to say bool and we call this jump request. Basically what's going to happen is when we press the jump button, we will say that jump request is true. And then once we get to our fixed update, every, every fixed um, interval, we can say if jump request is true, and we can just say that by checking if jump request, then and only then will we actually jump. And then from there we do just need to make sure that we set jump request back to false. So now we're doing pretty much the same thing, but we are handling our physics properly in the fixed update. You'll see here there's no actual change to our functionality. Still jumps the same way it always has. It's just, I say, like I say, happening in the fixed update where it should be. The next thing is, there is um, definitely some controversy of changing the velocity directly in here. And there's actually a couple of things that are issues here. Number one, we don't have our player moving left to right, so this code works right now perfectly fine. However, if you had code where you could move left and right as well, this right here would actually set it so that if you were, say, moving to the right through your level and you hit jump, all of a sudden your, um, your horizontal movement would be deadened entirely and you would just jump straight up because we're completely resetting the velocity from... Um, whatever it is, whatever there is maybe on the x-axis to only being vector 2 dot up, so only vertical movement. So we could quickly change this. One option you have here, you can quickly change this by making this a plus. And that, what that's going to do is that's going to add whatever your current velocity is, it's going to add the jump velocity as well. This is not a perfect solution because um, you're still affecting the velocity directly and that might not be again what you want. So the other alternate thing you can do is instead of directly changing the velocity in this way, we can do what's called adding a force. And so how we'll do that is I'm actually going to comment out this. I'll keep the script here so that um, you can see it. And if you want to still use that, you can still use that system. You just may run into some weird issues sometimes depending on what else your physics system is doing. So the alternate though we can do is we can say get component rigid body 2D again and say add force. And that added kind of quickly there, so I'll quickly show again here add force. There's a few options here. We're just going to do the regular add force. 
And instead, what we're going to add here now is the same information, vector 2 dot up times the jump velocity. However, that's again being added to whatever the current velocity is. So it's sort of doing the same idea, but it's handling it through Unity's built-in physics system. So you're going to have less bugs, ideally. Lastly, we want to just make sure that we're in force mode 2D dot impulse, which just gives this one instant push of force. And so that way we're not going to have like it weirdly kind of like rocketing up again. So we'll keep that like that. And so now what we'll see here again is that we haven't actually changed the functionality, but we're using kind of Unity's prescribed physics methods to do this rather than um, kind of controlling it manually, which again can cause some weird reactions at times. So that's all we need in our jump method. The other one is our better jump method. <clears throat> and this is what's controlling how gravity affects our um, character once it is actually jumping and moving around. Now in here, again, we are using the fixed update right, or the update right now, and we really should be doing this in the fixed update. In this case here, we can just say fixed update because we're not using inputs, so we don't have to worry about anything not responding properly. I'll save that. In addition, um, here where you see dot time dot delta time, there is a time dot fixed delta time uh, property as well that you can use. However, time dot delta time automatically knows that it's in a fixed update and will get the proper time interval for you. So you don't actually have to worry about that. You can change it if you want to, but it is not necessary. Now, once again here, we are again directly affecting the velocity. In this case, we are doing the proper adding um, kind of um, adding the change in gravity to our current velocity. However, again, um, this is manually controlling it and that's not always ideal. So I'm going to also show you here, I'm going to keep all this in here, however I'm going to copy and paste this and show you one alternate way that you can do this that uses, again, Unity's built-in physics a little more directly. So I'm going to comment this out, Control alt c on Windows, we'll do that for you. And instead of um, directly changing the velocity, what we will do is we'll keep the rigid body reference there. And what we can do is we can say rb.gravity scale equals, and in this case we're just going to use, in this case this is when we're falling, so we'll say fall multiply. And for our, if we're jumping but we're not holding the jump button, so we want to kind of have the lower jump, we can say here gravity scale equals low jump multiplier. So it's a lot more it's a lot more simple and a quicker to write as well, which is nice. However, we do need to add one more condition here, which is what if we are not falling and we're not jumping or we're not jumping but not holding the jump button. What what if we're either actively jumping or we're just at rest? And in those cases what we want is we do want for the um gravity scale to go back to normal. So we do need to make sure that we're going to say here, rb.gravity scale equals one. So that just brings it back to the normal gravity scale. So now we've got it in our fixed update and we are using, once again, Unity's kind of built in gravity scale rather than directly impacting the velocity. And once again here, we will see that if we hit play, it's still the same effect for us. We jump higher when we hold the jump button, we jump lower and we fall with this nice kind of thud. Um, however, there is one more thing that is not fixed here and was a common comment I saw, which is that if I keep on hitting the jump button, and now you will notice that there is a little bit less of, um, it doesn't just jump perfectly every single time and that's because we are applying that force rather than simply resetting the velocity every time. However, if I keep pressing it, I can jump infinitely and eventually fall down again. Um, this is a little bit more of a complex issue because what we really need to do here is check if there's ground under us and there's a few ways that we can approach that. So that I'm actually gonna cover in another video that will be coming out soon. And so if you follow along to that video, then we'll see how you can keep track of whether or not there's ground under you and whether or not it's legal for you to jump. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.